No offense, lad. As a matter of fact, that could be a plus for both of us. The mayor's son, a commissioned officer in His Majesty's service. <coughs> <coughs> I hope you won't mind, sir. I... <coughs> it's the most smoke. <coughs> you best get used to smoke. An officer spends half his life in the field surrounded by guns, the other half in taverns, surrounded by tobacco. I'll try, sir. Four o'clock already. Well, if you like, sir, I'll stand you to a spot of tea at the end. Tea? If I'm going to make you an officer, I'm going to make you a proper one. Played at the tavern, you asked for a rematch. Oh, sit down, Mr. Abingdon. Sir, but the Major said it was urgent. I'm afraid our talk will have to wait until later, lad. Duty calls. Well, can it wait? Common man's business waits, not the King's. Well, then I'll go back with you. I'm oh, sorry. It's a confidential matter. You do get involved, don't you? Uh, yes. Do or die, I always say. Do or die. What the devil is this? Well, sir, I, I... I left you on duty, Corporal, not on leave. After all, sir, it is a game of military strategy. You can visit with him in the guardhouse, or you can spend some days in it yourself if you're not off these premises in 30 seconds.
sir. What's been going on here? Uh, oh, the window, sir. It was just a boy with a ball, sir. The maps. Where are the maps? Maps? What maps? You men. A boy with a ball. Did you see him in the alley? A boy, sir? He stole a campaign map. Find it. Yes, sir. Cover the east end of the alley quickly. Uh, yes, sir. Stand back there. Keep the alley clear. What happened? Ted. Does he have the map? No, I have. But they have Ted. These eggs had more than enough time. All right, let's go. I'm going alone. We began all this together. We'll see it through together. Henry. I know you may consider it insubordination, Captain Larkin. But if I didn't stand with you all the way, I'd consider it treason. Besides, we all have to go sometime. I might as well assure myself of a condemned man's hearty meal. That's Captain Marshall. Going toward British headquarters. What are you doing? Just following orders, Captain. The other captain said I should stop you. But Colonel Scott must have a description of him. He's fought with his men twice. He says it's better they know who he is than who you are. Can't let him do that. Sorry, Captain. Orders are orders. Marshal makes it half of the way out with Tad. Maybe you can help him the rest of the way. With what? Well, you're the inventor, Henry. I just supply the ideas. You want to hear what I think of some of your ideas? Only after you come up with just what we need. And if it works, I won't even say I thought of it. He must be the one we're after. Send him in. Alone, sir? I can handle him, Corporal. I have two men stand by outside. Yes, sir. So, you've come about enlisting, have you? Yes, sir. You're the fellow who won the shooting match, I believe. Yes, sir. Was that pistol? Yes, sir. Nice balance. Yes, sir. But I've always been partial to the swords rather than pistols. Suppose we discuss the real reason for your visit now. Yes, I thought you might have recognized me. I was really rather enjoying our discussion of weapons, Colonel. Little doubt as to superiority. True. When the pistol's loaded, I mean to take you and the boy out of here, peacefully. It is against the code of conduct of an officer, isn't it? To bring a loaded weapon into an enemy camp on a mission of peace. You rebel whelp. What do you know of an officer's conduct? I'm learning very quickly, sir. Mostly from British mistakes. Two compounds separated by glass. When the glass breaks and the compounds mix.
Well, how are we going to plant them in the proper places? With Henry's golden arm. Harmless but effective. Stand aside. You'll never get out of this town alive. You go where I go, Colonel. Colonel! Rebels, sir, at the north end of town. What? In the woods, sir. I thought you should know. Route them before they attack. They're my men, Colonel. They won't attack if the boy and I ride out. Sir, he has a gun. How many are there? Well, I don't know, sir. I just caught a glimpse of them in the woods and ran. That is a strategical error, sir. Bringing your command of rebels that close is as good as delivering them directly into my hands. Prepare to attack. Take one step and you lose a commander. I'm prepared to accept that fate, sir, if it means it ends your Yankee doodles. Get down, sir. Take off! Sorry, sir, I thought it was artillery. Get off! Not without a cannon report! Oh, in the woods. <coughs> you had better forget about putting on a uniform, boy. You haven't the first instinct of a soldier. Yes, sir. You won't tell my father, sir, about refusing me. Believe me, sir, I shall never breathe a word to anyone that I even considered you. just declared officially unfit for military service. <laughs> What's this for? The next few years. Your mother'd like to know you're carrying it, instead of a gun. Do I have to? Man has to answer those questions himself. I guess a man shouldn't care too much what other people say about him either, should he? Not as long as he knows what he's doing his best. Jeremy, we were wondering what it was you did to change Tad's mind about you. <laughs> Whatever it was, the way he turned out should make every one of you feel like sticking feathers in your caps. Jeremy, I didn't tell, I swear. I know. Your uh, company is moving out, soldier. Captain John Marshall rode into the Battle of Germantown at the age of 22. He later became Chief Justice of the United States and principal founder of Judicial Review and of the American system of constitutional law. Stay with us now for James Robeson to be followed by the Jimmy Swaggart Half Hour. And be with us again tomorrow for the continuing adventures of the Young Rebels here on CBN.